Thank you for your introduction, uh, Alizé. And uh, good morning, everybody, on this nice and sunny day in Luxembourg. I hope you're all comfy in your home office or wherever you work and you have a coffee and uh, maybe your uh, bunny house shoes under the table. So I'd like today uh, talk a little bit about zero office. Without spoiling the whole thing, this is not a product. This is an approach, and it's it's a concept which matches and, and goes along with, with our product portfolio. So before we dive into that one, I'd like to play a little short round of, of bingo. Sorry, there is no price to win. Uh, however, I think everybody can relate to that. You know, So we all work now from home or most of us or a lot of us work from home, partially from the office. And when working from home, I think there are a lot of issues everybody of us has bumped into. Huh? So uh, I don't, I don't want to count how many times I've heard the thing, can you hear me or, or we can't hear you. Uh, can you please go on mute? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I, I can't dial in. It doesn't work. Oh, I, I don't have the file uh, for this thing. I have to go to the office. So all these things, you know, everybody of us knows them by now inside, outside. So. If you're interested, we have a poll on uh, how companies actually handle their specific situation because it's a different situation for every company. Um, if it would be nice if if you can go um, on the stage polls and so we can get some feedback. It's it's on the uh, stage poll section between the chat and the Q and A. So, rewinding the clock, once upon a time, COVID nineteen came around the corner and. I think it has changed the way not only we worked in the last year, but it will also change the way we work in the future. Uh, I think most of us will agree that going back to 100% office the way it has been before is probably not going to happen. So the world has changed forever. And uh, for most companies, that means you have to adapt in, in some way. Uh, it's it's a large social paradigm shift. As somebody um, said at an event, it's not about learning new things. It's much more about unlearning old habits. So it's about the creation of a new workplace. So And that raises, of course, the question, what do we do now? Uh, OK, we have somehow survived so far. Uh, but what do we do mid to, to long term? So if you look at the features and functions, what do you do in the office actually? So for example, you have a meeting. What are the essentials of, of a physical meeting? Everybody knows where it is. You have your meeting room. Uh, the meeting starts on time. You have a closed environment without too much disturbance. Uh, basically, uh, that means your kids don't rush into the meeting in the office. You have a board to visualize things. Everybody can be seen, everybody can be heard, everybody can use the whiteboard. That means you, you have a whiteboard and, well, yeah, everybody knows how to use a pen. So that means you, you have access to a whiteboard and you also have the capability to do the whiteboard. If you dig a little, dig a little bit deeper, what are the typical actions in, in, in such a meeting? Well, what do you do? You explain things, uh, you, you draw something, you write, you do present something. Um, then you decide on things, uh, you vote, you delegate, maybe you create a document, a memo, or a pitch, and you do collaborate. And that basically means in groups, in small teams, but it also means if you have a physical meeting that you sometimes do side discussions. So with COVID around the corner, that changed dramatically. And that also leaves a lot of questions. Suddenly people means that just being busy is not equal to valuable work. And uh, you can also be productive when you're not in the office. I have a good friend, he's he's a large automotive company, and I ask him, hey, how do you cope with the situation at your company? I mean, you're, you're physically manufacturing sport cars. And he said, well, for, for the guys on the production floor, it's, it's of course not possible, but well, he's more into the development. And he said he hadn't seen his colleagues for, for nine months. And I said, well, what are the lessons learned so far? And he said, initially, the management was not convinced because they thought uh, office means productivity. So they were afraid that people would work less when, when working from home or when not being in the office. And then they suddenly realized 
Uh, it's the same guys who are not working from home uh, who are usually unproductive in the office anyway. So it doesn't really change anything. And at that point in time, the management accepted that uh, working from home is a way. Of course, there are some things which are harder. So if you have new colleagues onboarding, it's very hard to, to get the company culture into somebody when you don't see all the colleagues. No? But it, it works to some degree. So And we all survived. So what have we done? If you look at all the different jobs that you have, uh, there are some common denominators what you do in an office. So one thing is, and we have tried to structure that, and that's an, just, uh, let's say, a fraction of, of all the tasks that uh, we try to catalog to really see what is the essential of, of office work? So in an office, you do communicate. Huh? You talk to a person directly. You talk with multiple persons with your team. You present something. Uh, well, you have the whiteboard, as we have seen before in uh, uh, when you do a meeting somewhere. Uh, maybe you work together on a document, or you, you chat with people who are somewhere in another office. Phone calls, of course, is an essential thing. Faxes. Uh, maybe you have that. Uh, unplanned casual chat, which something is probably one of the things that people really miss because that coffee chat is essentially a substantial part of, of company culture and uh, at a lot of companies, same as, as the notice board. And that's simply not replicable uh, when, when, when working from home. And of course, you have external meetings either in the office or, or somewhere else. Then on the administrative side, you also have a lot of tasks that you do in an office. It's all the paperwork. You know, well, you know, you know, you 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 timestamp in and out. You sign documents. You file documents. Oh, where's that contract? Oh, it's somewhere in the cabinet. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, can can we see what did we do with this customer two years ago? So uh, you hear EDF also huh? that all the electronic document filing is, is an essential part, which which suddenly comes up if you don't have physical access to documents. Huh? Uh, but also getting rid of documents that that's something I, I don't think that anybody of us has that big silver uh, bucket with a slit where you can depose documents in a secure way at home. So that's something you do in the office. You get approvals. Uh, you hand over physical things. Then moving a little bit up more into the IT side, uh, what are things you do with your computer when you're in the office? You log in, you log out. Uh, maybe depending on your environment, you're not working directly on your PC, but you have somewhere uh, a VDI, a remote desktop solution. Uh, you have installed programs on your PC. You might work with a browser or with service via browser. You print documents password changing, and of course, access to files is an essentially computer task. Now, if you take that further to the ICT part, you end up with security. This is something that's even harder to replicate when you're not working from the office because you have physical access control in the office. You can actually have a guard, uh, and I believe nobody of us has standing somebody from Group for Security uh, in, in, in front of his personal uh, room. So how do you actually control security? How do you make sure that it's that person uh, who actually approves something on a PC when working from home compared to working from the office? So for security, Working from home, you suddenly don't have one closed environment, one castle that you need to protect, but you suddenly have 200 outposts that you uh, protect. So that's something that is a huge challenge for the IT side. So apart from all the tasks, of course, uh, where you can throw in some tools, we said, hmm, OK. But is it really all about tooling? And we came to the conclusion, no, it's not about the tool. It's 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 about the approach. Uh, it's about the culture that you need to change. So there are some things where we can help you. We have tooling, and we have a structured approach. I'll come to that a little bit later. Uh, there are some things where we are not really 100% geared to help you, because it's also about the culture. And as I said, it's it's sorry, it's it's about uh, not about what you need to learn, but it's more or less what you need to unlearn when 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 working from home. So I also have somebody who said, hey, I really like that. You know, he's 
he's he's leading a large department uh, with a diversified team over several locations and he said hey in the past i lost so much time when moving from one production plant to the other one especially when when traveling international uh, by now, since everybody is used to say well, WebEx or, or other video conferencing is the standard, he said, I'll really like that because I, for me, it doesn't take half a day in between two meetings. I can schedule meetings with five minute breaks in between and everybody's aware, well, yeah, it's the standard. We live in, in, in video conferencing time. So compared to the office norm ways, oh yeah, well, no physical meeting, or do you really have to do that video conferencing? By now, it's the norm. Compared to before COVID in Luxembourg, only 7% of the workers in Luxembourg did that. Of course, if you switch to such an environment, there are some things uh, you, you need to take in consideration, which, which were not really that, let's say, visible when, when doing physical meetings. Uh, uh, suddenly, uh, you need to really brush up on your meeting hygiene because if you're sitting somewhere in a room and somebody is 10 minutes later, oh, sorry, I was caught in a meeting with my boss or something, uh, that's a small annoyance. If you have 10 people sitting in front of a video conference at home and everybody is just waiting for that person, it really gets annoying. So that's something where where we cannot really help you that much. Then, for example, if you have background noise, that's also something yeah, we, we all know that. Can you please go on mute? We we'll, we can't hear the others. Or um, uh, in in a real uh, let's say live meeting, you can hear people talking to each other uh, at the same time. So your your brain is capable of doing that because you have two ears. But if you have everything coming from the loudspeaker and you have five people chattering. Uh, you end up with something that doesn't work. Then you have people who are simply not familiar with, with the different tools at hand. Yeah? So we all know that, oh, there's a new tool, a new different video conferencing tool. How do you use that? Uh, I, I don't know how to activate my microphone for this thing. Oh, uh, sorry, where, where is that? Where are you? Oh, sorry, if you work on a digital whiteboard. And there are also things that you need to do uh, apart from from training people and and making sure there are some rules to be followed, you also need to, for example, make sure that stuff is checked up front. Uh, it's if you're going into the meeting and you have five people with a non-working PC, well, you can be sure the meeting will last a lot uh, longer than uh, than anticipated. Then one thing we, for example, we also discovered uh, is you never do a check-in, check-out um, for for a physical meeting because you meet the people on the floor, then you go into the meeting room. But um, if you actually have a lot of meetings with a team, uh, we, we figured it's it makes sense to change the culture a little bit. Yeah? So you do a check-in, you say, hey, how's everybody? So you basically embed that, that casual component which you have in the office, you embed that into into the routine while doing video conferencing or collaboration, regardless if it's via Jabba. So by now, I think everybody knows that you you you, you ping somebody and you said, "Hey, how are you doing?" Uh, it's it's probably not the same on the same level like what you would have done when you were working from the office before. So there are some things that that change. Also, then you have the breaks. Uh, there is um, a medical phenomenon which is called video fatigue, uh, video conferencing fatigue. It, it really exists. And um, the current status is it, it breaks down to that, you know, if, if you're feeling exhausted after a full day of video conferencing and you say, I never felt that, that low energy when doing physical meetings, there's a simple reason for it. If you're doing a video conferencing, you look in one direction. A whole day and all the different voices are coming from that one direction if you have a physical meeting you have somebody on the, your left side who's talking you have somebody on your right side who's talking and your brain can immediately identify who is talking uh, and and match that now if you have a video conference you have 20 people on the screen your brain needs to do compensate for the the missing stereo stuff and you actually have to do um, that additional work in your brain and that is really exhausting because it takes some some background processing in, in the brain. 
And we have that uh, one thing, for example, we found very, very, very good. Uh, we, we changed the voting process. Uh, video conferencing, five people saying, do you like that? Shall we do that? Yes, no, forget about that. One after the other takes too long. We switched for, for voting, for example, for just for simple hand signals, because that's something you can immediately see. So that's just a side tip I hear over there. It's it's just underlining uh, the, the, the message that it's not the tooling, it's the approach, it's the culture, it's what you need to unlearn rather than learn new. Now, if you go backstage, this is all happening front stage. This is all happening while, while, while you're working. But um, if you're going backstage, there are also serious struggles for, for, for the IT. And, and trust me, I've been there, done it, got the T-shirt. Uh, I've run a large IT organization myself. And if you have people uh, distributed evenly over the planet, you suddenly things that are easily taken care of in the office really become a challenge. Of course, you have all the security aspects. Uh, you also have suddenly things that you took care of in the office um, physically. So um, I think these, these are all components that you, if you're just, uh, let's say, a non-IT worker in your company, uh, that you might not be fully aware of. But I think if admin day comes around the corner, give the guys a cheer because there's a lot of company admins who have done really, really a whole lot to make sure that you can work from, from home or from outside your office. So the user always expects immediate response. What we have done is we have we have taken our product portfolio, um, and uh, we have bro well broken it down to two different things. Uh, we have so we have taken uh, telco and unified communication. Then we have taken all the products for, uh, around the user experience, so the laptop, uh, peripherals, all that kind of stuff. And then the central components, which are uh, cloud and, and security focused. These are the things that, that we are more, let's say, this is just structuring our product portfolio according to all the needs that, that we have seen. So what is Zero Office really about? Zero Office is, is, a, is a concept for an effective advanced workplace. As I said before, it's not about a product portfolio. Now, don't get me wrong, we are happy, you know, if you know exactly what you need and you have a 200 page RFP, we're more than happy to do that. But what we have seen is uh, people struggle a little bit about it's a, with, with a situation. It's a hen and an egg problem. It's, it's kind of like, what do you need uh, to enable your workforce from, from properly working? Well, what do you have? What can you offer? Well, if I don't know what you need, uh, so maybe we start with the needs first. And so, and in, in order to use that hen and egg problem, uh, we said, okay, fine, let's break it down to, to take our product portfolio, break it down into different chunks. And then we try to make this a structured approach so that we can break that, that vicious cycle. So to give you two examples, first one, is um, there's maybe somebody who says, well, collaboration is for me pain point number one, because for every company, the problems are slightly different. So if you're, of course, in a bank, security has a much higher focus than if you're uh, a plumber uh, that just needs to coordinate his workforce for 20 people. Um, so uh, collaboration is, is a problem for me, and I need to engage suddenly with my clients because they don't come to our office anymore. So we basically have, we, we, we absorb that, we discuss that, we do some, some uh, uh, joint uh, workshops and uh, then we can come up with different things. So this is just, uh, how can I say that? Suggestion de menu de jour. So uh, somebody says, okay, no, I need something right now to, to collaborate ready. We have some things in our product portfolio where we can say, oh, okay, fine, uh, WebEx meetings will, will to some degree uh, solve your problem. So it's not the only tool, we also have others and uh, we'll also give you some administrative tools so that you actually can, can, can control and administer all the different users for that. That's for example, something you can set up in a day, uh, no problem. If you say, yeah, okay, fine. I wanna have some 
let's say, uh, fixed mobile uh, unification service where I can uh, have people calling my office line and uh, they end up on the mobile of, of the specific user. So that's, by the way, pretty much the standard of uh, for a lot of companies that have help, helplines by now. Uh, that's something where we say, okay, yeah, we got U-Touch for that and we can deploy such a thing in, in two works. Okay, fine. Uh, we also have something where I have uh, a service that uh, can help my customers to qualify or, or uh, their needs before they actually call people. And oh, yeah, we do for that. For example, we have a chatbot and uh, we are using it ourselves. And I don't know if you have seen the presentation because it was uh, live this week uh, as well. So second case scenario is uh, somebody who says, OK, I'm, I'm more concerned about all the, the data and file accessibility. That's something or we, we can also tackle. This is more on, on for a company that was not prepared to work uh, from home. So uh, you need like maybe a centralized place for all the data. Uh, you need to have them accessible from the different uh, locations. Oh, and by the way, uh, for security reasons, I don't want to equip everybody with a laptop. No, uh, I want to have 200 virtual desktops somewhere. Can you deploy that based on Windows 10? We'd say, yeah, uh, we actually have sec for security Palo Alto. We can bridge that to make it make sure it, it's secure. We can also manage your backups. And we can actually uh, deploy 200 machines on Azure because it's a cloud-based solution. And since we are PSF and we have done all the work up front to make sure it's it's compliant, we can even give you that um, in, in, a, in a compliant way. So how do we do actually the approach? And this is now the key slide. Their, their office is, is, is a journey. It's, it's a transformation approach tailored for each customer because, as I said, every customer has, has different needs, depending on if you're a plumber or if you're a bank. So first thing we ask, usually, we start off with a strategy. What is your strategy? What do you want to do? What, what is your, your target vision? How do you want to actually support your employees working um, from outside the office? Then in a second step, we'll, we'll assess uh, the, the, the current landscape. What do you have already? Maybe you have already uh, VDIs. Maybe you have a, a proper working Citrix solution in place, but you need to do something um, where, where you have, uh, I don't know, you know uh, where you just need additional machines. Um, then. We actually do an enablement engagement where we prepare everything for migration. Because if you actually have a little bit more work to do than simply going saying, hey, here's 200 laptops, that's easy to do. But if you want to deploy a secure solution that enables people working from home, whereas compared to your just uh, working from the office in a complete secure environment, uh, that requires some thinking for, for the for the preparation and, and also making sure that you don't have to take your whole workforce offline for uh, two weeks just to say, hey, yeah, sorry, well, we need to prepare everything now. So next step is, is the transition, uh, where we actually help you in, in the transition to really uh, activate all these different services so that you come towards a zero office structure. Uh, then we also help you operate it. And operating means not only helping the IT, but it also includes uh, helping, for example, your, your users uh, by supporting them with, with training or with uh, other, let's say, day-to-day -day activities uh, just to make sure everything is, is, is running smoothly. We have done that firsthand in-house. So we have experienced that ourselves. Um, so, and, and we, know, of course, know the tooling. We have all the different uh, departments that are specialized in UC, in security, in, in cloud technology. So we can actually help you building a, a, a tailored solution uh, that enables you to work from, from outside the office. And last but not least, of course, 
because it's a continuously um, improving process. Uh, there's never any complex IT implementation or where there is no room for improvement. Uh, nobody's perfect, we know that. And sometimes the needs change. Sometimes uh, you taste something and they say, oh, that's cool. Uh, now I want to not only have that for a specific department, I want to roll out this thing for the complete company. How do I do that? So we'll also help you continuously improving your IT, ICT services. So. Last but not least, this is the only thing where we cannot really help you uh, dealing with doubt. That's that's uh, not really, let's say, part of our product portfolio. However, I wanted to to point your point you to to this slide as well. Um, the the Stone Age didn't end because people ran out of stones. It be ended because people found something better, and that's that's very very important. And I think that. With the new ways of working, we are drifting in a situation where we will never return 100% to the office as we have seen that before. So that's something where we cannot really help you. This is something you really need to do uh, on, on, on your own. So that having said, this is the last slide. Uh, I, I hope you liked it. If you have questions, feel free to ping me to discuss, or if you have specific questions, I'd be happy to forward you to, to the right contact. And uh, please don't forget to go on, on the polls. Uh, that would be really nice because it also helps us uh, in improving our feedback. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit faster than anticipated. So I'll give you the time to get uh, another coffee Enjoy the weekend and, well, hope to help you in, with these topics in the future. Thank you.